Are you training for a job in the construction industry? If you're studying at college or partway through an apprenticeship, there'll be lots of information to take in and new skills to learn. But to work successfully in construction, there are other things you'll need to know about, and one of them is tax. This short video provides you with an introduction to the Construction Industry Scheme, or CIS, which is run by us, HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC for short. So, let's begin with what the Construction Industry Scheme is and who it applies to. CIS is a unique way of paying income tax for self-employed people who work as subcontractors in the construction industry, which could be you when you finish your training and start work. The scheme covers most types of construction work done in the UK, including preparing the site, repair work, building, decorating and demolition. A subcontractor is anyone who does construction work for a contractor. And if you're wondering what a contractor is, well, they're the person or business that supplies the materials or labour for a job. If you're a subcontractor, you'll have the option to register for CIS. It's not compulsory, but if you don't register, you'll have to pay more money up front from your earnings to HMRC. If that prospect doesn't appeal to you, here are four important things you'll need to do to pay your tax through CIS and to keep your tax affairs in order. The first thing is to register for self-assessment and CIS. You can do this by going to the gov.uk website and searching set up as a sole trader. Then click on the link, register for self-assessment. You'll need to provide your name, date of birth, email address, and your national insurance number. You can find your national insurance number on your payslip or on letters you might have received about tax, pensions, and benefits. Near the end of the registration process, you'll be asked a series of questions. One of these is, do you intend to work in the construction industry? By ticking this box, you'll be registering for CIS. HMRC will then send you two letters. One will show your unique taxpayer reference number for self-assessment. The other will confirm your registration for CIS and is proof that you're entitled to use the scheme. It's important that you keep both letters safe. The second thing is to talk to your contractor about tax. You'll need to tell him the name you used when you signed up for CIS, your unique taxpayer reference number and your national insurance number. Your contractor will then be able to make deductions from your pay on your behalf using CIS. And these amounts will go towards your tax and national insurance bill for the tax year. The third thing is to keep accurate records so that at the end of the tax year, you can make sure you've paid the right amount of tax. Whether you're the messiest, most disorganized person you know, or the world's most organized person, you'll need to stay on top of the paperwork. Each time you're paid, your contractor will give you a payment and deduction statement, usually called a PDS. If you don't get one, you must ask for it. You'll need to keep all of these statements as they'll show how much you've earned and the amounts that have been deducted by all of the contractors you've worked for. If the contractor refuses to give you a PDS, you should call HMRC's CIS helpline for advice. You should also keep the invoices for any materials you pay for yourself. And if you do some work on your own for a private household, you must keep a copy of the invoice that you give to the person and all the invoices for the materials you buy to do the job. Finally, each tax year, you'll need to complete a tax return. You can do this online and you'll find it easier to do if you get all your records together before you start. The online form which covers the tax years 6th of April one year to the 5th of April the next will automatically calculate how much tax you have to pay or how much is due back to you. If the amount that's already been deducted by all the contractors you've worked for is more than the tax you owe, HMRC will pay you the difference. The good news is that this is often the case in the early years of using the scheme, when your earnings are likely to be lower. Oh, and don't leave it too late because there are strict deadlines for completing a tax return and financial penalties if you miss the date. So, it's important to stay on top of things. So that's a very quick introduction to the construction industry scheme and some of the things you'll need to do if you start work as a subcontractor. There's plenty of help and advice available for you, free of charge, from HMRC, including e-learning and videos, which you can access through the gov.uk website. You can also sign up for HMRC webinars on CIS for subcontractors, self-assessment help and support, 
and how to complete your online tax return. And there are HMRC, CIS and self-assessment helplines that you can call if you have any questions. Thank you for listening.